So I'm here at my favorite spot here in Palos Verdes. We are going to be doing a simulated dig site today for the upcoming Ancient Civilizations in the Bible study that we're doing. It's a 12 week course covering all sorts of things in the Bible. A few weeks from now our students are going to come out here to these mountains and they're going to be actually digging up a simulated dig site, teaching them how to grid, how to dig up, how to preserve and catalog things that they find here. Um, it's a great spot, a great site out here in the Palos Verdes Hills. You can see we're covered by, by greenery, by rocks, and the Pacific Ocean you can see even right out there. So it's going to be a great time, a great day. Hope you like this. Up here you can see some of these cliffs that are up here. It's a great location where we're at down here. Um, it almost kind of looks like a, a Middle East or Palestinian site that we find uh, maybe in ancient Israel. Um, beautiful location for this that we're going to be doing here in a few weeks. Um, it's going to be an exciting time. The study that the kids are participating in is going to teach them a lot about the ancient civilizations, um, the archaeology, um, a lot of the physical evidence that we see supporting what the Bible says. Uh, from Genesis all the way through Malachi, a lot of the Old Testament stuff, all the way right up into the time of, of Christ himself studying ancient Rome. Now this plant we have here is known in some areas as squaw brush. And what are these little berries here? Are um, very bitter, very kind of tangy, but they are loaded in vitamin C and actually fairly good to eat. You can chew on them. I don't usually swallow them just because they're kind of very seedy inside, but they do con contain a lot of vitamin C. Pretty good for you. They used to say that the natives would come out here and get these squaw brush berries and then mix it in to make pemmican, which is kind of a mixture of berries and nuts and kind of like a, a beef jerky sort of mix that they would take on them on long trips with them. So it's pretty neat right out here in this spot. I'm going to eat a few. There we go. They're a bit sour, a bit tangy, but really not, not too bad. Almost like a drinking Kool-Aid without sugar. Yeah. This little spot we have here is one of my favorite places. It's kind of a hike to get up here, but once you do, it's beautiful. You can see all the way out through the valley. You can see the Pacific Ocean out there in the distance. And this little spot we have here, it's kind of a little clearing inside of a, a, a tree that's kind of weeping and hanging over. We call this the rabbi tree because it kind of reminds us of a, maybe a place where Jesus could have come and, and sat around and talked with the disciples at. Now, of course, this is here in Southern California, but this type of tree and this little clearing just reminds us a lot of of you know Israel and some of the places where you know Jesus and his disciples would get away maybe in the Garden of Gethsemane um, wherever it was on the Mount of Olives he could have gone wherever it was it's kind of a beautiful reminder of Jesus and his time with the disciples and that's why we call it the, the rabbi tree now we're headed over here right now to the place that we're gonna actually create this little dig site Kind of a little corner over here, out of the way. We won't disturb anything that's out here. We found a nice good uh, patch of ground. Right here we're just going to dig up a little bit, put a few things in the ground, just a couple inches down there, and then later on we'll be able to, to grid this spot and dig for what we've put down there before. And the students aren't here so they don't know where it is or what it is, but they'll have a blast when they come on out here and be able to dig this up. Okay, so now we have a few small holes dug. Only about three or four inches down, um, but this is a great spot right here. It's in a clearing on bare ground, so we're not digging up any plants, not damaging the environment or anything. We'll fill it back up with the dirt, and that will be like no one's ever been here. So here I'm going to go ahead and put some of the artifacts that I've uh, brought with me. We're going to stick in these holes, bury it up about three or four weeks from now. Students come out here, hopefully by then it will look like uh, completely untouched ground. It'll be pretty neat. So there you have it. Everything's buried, covered back over with some loose debris and leaves and such. Um, we should be getting some rain between now and then. So in a few weeks, when we come back to this spot, you won't even know that it was recently dug. Kind of the way we want it. It'll be pretty neat, pretty fun time here. Now here I am right along the cliff side that you may have seen earlier. And this is where we get a lot of good marine fossils whatnot um, but typically where I'm at right down here is a lot of loose really loose it's not really you know formed in slabs or sheets that you can break open it's all pretty loose stuff you can see actually some some fissures where uh, different mineral deposits have gone through and actually formed uh, little crystals sometimes it runs all the way through some of these um, right here is really not where you find any fossils it's pretty much 
up there, if you can see a layer going right about there, is actually where we see a lot of these marine fossils. In fact, there's an overhang right there you can see. That's where the fossil layers come from. They fall down the mountain, down this hillside, and what they'll do is they'll go down these screes, end up down there in the valley below, and that's usually one of the best places you can find it. It's almost like working tailing piles. If you've ever been to old mine, um, mining sites, you can see over there where some of these things have just fallen out, washed out from the rains, fallen out um, just from erosion. And so they'll come down the hills and then really at the bottom is the best place to look for it. Probably also a little bit safer to look for it when you're down at the bottom because every so often a few of these rocks have been falling out even since I've been up here. And in fact, when I was over there just a little bit ago, there was a pretty good little slide that went and it kept going for about, oh, 30 to 45 seconds. Um, not too major, but you know, enough to make you definitely keep your head down when you're walking around here, make sure nothing falls on you. That's one of the reasons why I've got a hat today is to keep some of that from falling and actually uh, hitting my face. Um, so one of the best things you can do, if you're out here, if you're up against a cliff like this and some rocks start to tumble out, best thing you can do is actually hug the cliff, get right up against it. Because typically you'll have an overhang kind of like I've got here, the rocks will actually fall down a little bit further past where the cliff is. So if that starts happening, hug that cliff, get right up against it. Um, if you can get under a ledge, it's even better because some of those rock slides, even starting out small, can grow to be pretty deadly. Even if not major rocks hit you, it can definitely push you down the hill and you definitely don't want that because it's, it's fairly steep here. I'd say probably about a 45 degree angle right here that we're looking at. Here you can actually see an example of one of the little scree slides that I was telling you about. Really fine material down here. Um, it's almost, you know, sand-like. And what's happened is it's kind of washed down this gully. It's come down here, made its way down, hit this rock right here and bounced out and then made this pile that goes all the way down here. And if you look right underneath where this little cliff edge almost is, there's actually a good deep hole right here comparison to the rest of the site here and you can see actually from that point that's where these rocks would have come washing down over the top and actually just bounced right over so if you're ever in a rock slide situation hug that cliff get up against there inside something and hopefully what's above you um, even if it's not that deep will protect you from any rocks any slides they'll hopefully just go right on over your head and out down the cliff You can see some of these crystals from various salts and whatnot that have actually come down through this crevice and formed this kind of lattice work almost of very fine crystals and almost like powder. So right back there, you can see that green with that ridges. Just over there is where we dug a little site about a quarter mile away and then went up along this ridge, hugged this ridge along Went up, up along there, stopped up there, pretty good spot up there for some uh, fossils, a lot of fish scales and whatnot, and then actually made our way down this part, mostly on the backside. Kind of a fun way to go, but make sure you have a stick or something in hand. I had my hammer with me, so I was able to dig in to the hill, kind of slow you down, brace, and break yourself as you're making your way down some of these hills. If you can find a good scree slide, you can go down it. Um, it's almost safer just to sit down and scoot on the way down, but make sure you keep going because if you stop too much, you'll have a lot of rocks piling up along the back of you and they have a tendency to push you down when you don't want to go. So once you commit, just go, have something in hand to help slow you down and enjoy the ride. Yeah, that's why it's one of my favorite places to come dig for fossils and go on hikes. Don't get much better view than that, overlooking the Pacific Ocean. Down there below you can see Trump National Golf Course. Some great trails from there that go down to the ocean where there's some public access paths and trails for tide pools. <laughs> 